Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. It is Monday, November 22nd, 2021, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And uh, we're going to continue, this is part three, of a look at the first edition Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide section on artifacts and relics. We talked about the good stuff you can get from an artifact or relic, some of the effects. But uh, this week, we're going to dive into some of the bad stuff. The nasty, the malevolent, and uh, horribleness. And, you know, maybe we'll even get as far as side effects. We'll see. This uh, It's a large section. I knew it would take at least a couple few parts, shows, whatever, to uh, cover it all. And uh, I don't have a problem with that. It'll be whatever how long it is, you know. I do want to say a couple of things at the outset, though. What is on my mind? Oh, yeah. Um, Fat Dragon Games is having their November sale. Black Friday, Cyber Monday combination thingy. So go check them out. Everything except the newest, uh, most recent releases are included in the sale and I'll be a link in the show notes uh, so feel free to check that out and see what he's got see what he has that you haven't already had because I'm sure a lot of you are people that love his stuff I also want to mention wearing my big big train shirt today because sadly uh, just before the weekend I think it was Friday David Longden, who was just 56, uh, died, the lead singer of Big Big Train, uh, a long time, long time group, uh, they've been around since the 90s and very influential in prog rock circles, um, a lot of people compared him early on to his vocal stylings, to that of Peter Gabriel of Genesis, one of my favorite bands. And there are some similarities, for sure. <clears throat> uh, he really made things his own, though. I mean, you know, you don't have a 20-year career without doing some things, and 20-plus. Uh, so, my condolences to his friends and family, who I, I doubt are listening here, but it's worth mentioning uh, someone as uh, prolific as him in an area of music that I really love. Uh, my gaming has often been inspired by a, a lot of uh, lyrics from progressive rock music tunes, and there's no doubt that I listen to it a lot while I'm creating and while I'm just enjoying myself. So there's that to be said about that type of music and how it has influenced me. But let's move on with the uh, the uh, artifacts and uh, relics part three section here. What do we got here? I'm going to have to pop this up on my screen too. Major malevolent effects. I, I want to say, did we do minor this is four okay so we had the minor effects this is the major ones this is part four and then I think there's a five and a six with uh, some benefit and then uh, some side effects uh, or how it changes you but we'll stick with this for now a, the first of the major malevolent effects is body rot is 10% cumulative likely whenever a primary power is used and part of the body is permanently lost. That is, uh, an ear could come off. Oop, it looks like I froze. I think my vocals are still coming through. So uh, let me see what I could do one second here. Let's let's do this so we can be officially experiencing difficulties. 
I'm going to have to be right back. All right, there we go. Experiencing difficulties. I think we got to fix now. So I'm going to uh, do this again. We don't edit the show. It's live. It's streaming. It's exciting. It's screwed up as it happens to be when it happens. Body rot, 10% cumulative. So you can have an ear fall off, lose a finger, uh, an arm, a leg, uh, more. And that just is the way it's going to be every time you use a primary power. B, capricious alignment change each time a primary power is used. So you'll have uh, alignment shifts and urges and yearnings and whatnot in other areas that you wouldn't normally based on an alignment change. C, Gesh quest placed upon possessor. You may be uh, summoned or uh, tasked with performing some mighty quest. And uh, these are ones you can't refuse. So they become all or nothing. They become what you need to do immediately. Everything you live for has to be in furtherance of achieving those goals. So... Oh, I'm just going to put that off and go do something else is not an option. D. Item contains the life force of another person. And after a set number of uses, the possessor's life force is drawn into it and the former soul released. I'm feeling like we read these. Maybe we did already, but I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, we'll recap it anyway. So you could get drawn into the item itself. You're very being and whoever was trapped in there before takes over your body so knowing what they know about having been trapped in the item they're probably going to be pretty happy to be out of it and they're probably going to be not so willing to go back into it which means that you are all <laughs> likely to be uh likely to be in there for quite some time so here's the kind of logical thinking on this the person who becomes you takes over your body is probably not want to going to want to continue to use the item because they might switch back and they don't want that they also don't want it anywhere around them they don't want to give it to somebody else in the adventuring party we're assuming they're pretending to be you and, and sticking around for a bit. Because if they give it to someone else, then if then the person whose body they took over takes over another person's body in the group, and then that person is trapped into the item, they're going to figure out what's going on. They're going to know that uh, they're going to have to do the old double switcheroo to get back into their rightful bodies. And then, of course, they're going to have to be okay with putting somebody back into the item that managed to get out of it and probably uh, may not have deserved being in there in the first place. So there's a lot of a lot of complication to that situation. If, in fact, the person who got out of the item is dishonest and isn't come clean about it right away, they're probably going to want to throw this thing down a well or hide it somewhere far away so that they can live out a semi-normal life they may not stick around with the group but in any event uh, they don't want to go back into the item that's for sure what else do we have here item has power to affect possessor when primary power is used if the character has not followed the alignment or purposes of the artifact relic so the item itself the artifact or relic is a uh, 
a thing that exists in the world with a purpose with uh, with an alignment as well and whatever it is meant to be doing or meant to be used for uh, becomes what the person wielding this artifact or relic has to be focused on or the item the artifact or relic will find some way of damaging or hurting or coercing the uh, person who possesses the artifact or relic so it may have a lot of fancy tricks and good things for you to do or to use that are helpful but there's something going on there and it wants it wants something to happen in the world or it wants to get to some place and uh, it's going to use the person who has the item in ways that uh, furtherance of that uh, of that goal or quest or purpose of its own f item is a prison for a powerful being and there is a one percent to four percent cumulative chance per usage that it will break free kill the possessor's soul and using his or her body proceed to slay all associates and henchmen of this character i guess that's just tying up loose ends right <laughs> so once it takes you out once it takes out the user of the artifact or relic it is going to then want to make sure that uh, no one else knows that it is broken out of this prison being a prison being a powerful being put in a prison it only stands a reason that a more powerful being or group of beings that are more power co powerful collectively have put this being in into this prison and this being now that it's out does not want them to know that it's out so it's going to have to uh, clean up all witnesses here apparently g item is itself a living sentient being forced to serve but each usage of a primary power gives a one to three percent cumulative possibility that the spell will be broken and the being will number of things here one change the possessor into a like artifact or relic two gesh quest the possessor to perform a mission of its choosing three kill the possessor four mentally enslave the possessor for a period of two to eight weeks so just take him over for a while I think those are all pretty self-explanatory and similar in ways to ones that we've just previ previously talked about. So you can have all sorts of uh, options here as far as uh, quests are concerned, as far as uh, creating a new item and what does the rest of the group do to change that back. Um, when uh, somebody is mentally enslaved, do they let on right away? Do they find finagly ways of uh, getting certain agendas done and then knowing they have a period of time or maybe they don't know they're on a clock it's worth thinking about those things h item is powerless against and hates one to three species of creatures and when within 10 feet of any such creature it forces the possessor to attack goblins orcs hobgoblins uh, something something similar you want uh, maybe it's a uh, very malevolent item an evil item and it uh, tends to go into the hands of humans but despises elves dwarves and halflings or gnomes or three different species races that might actually be those of party members so now there's uh, inner party conflict maybe the item is so great the the player doesn't wish to give it up and will seek out a uh, kind of a xenophobic uh, humans only group to then uh, be part of and well we know where that's going i item releases a gas which renders all creatures including wielder within 20 feet powerless to move for 5 to 20 rounds well we've all been there after a thanksgiving meal not thanksgiving hope everyone has a happy one we'll see you after that if you're in the u.s 
Um, renders all creatures, including wielder. So, you know, somebody could just walk up and pick up the item and walk off with it and rob you entirely. They don't know how long you're out, so they only grab what they see as the best items right away. But you never know. And this is, uh, these are things that happen when you use the item. So you are probably in a situation where there are enemies about and you go to use this item and then poof, within 20 feet, everybody, everybody goes unconscious or powerless and, uh, you're at the, uh, you're at the mercy of your enemies. J, lose one point of charisma. Constitution for K, dexterity for L. We lose one point of hit points permanently. For M, intelligence N, strength O, wisdom P. So there's seven quick items that are all potentially devastating to a character that is crafted for maximizing whichever of those abilities if it hits you in an ability score that you don't really uh, focus on as a uh, character it might not be so bad but the next time you use it boom what if it hits you in your primary your prime requisite what if you keep getting hit with hit points every time um, it is possible for there to be more than one of these uh, malevolent uh, things to happen every time you use the item. It is possible that it's just going to be one. Let's say it's your dexterity. Boom. Lose the dexterity. Use the item again. There's a chance. Or maybe it's automatic. Boom. Dexterity. Boom. Dexterity. Suddenly, you're several points down and you're having trouble uh, just walking across a room without tripping on something or banging a knee or all sorts of Dangerous things can happen to somebody. But do you give up the item? Maybe the item's so good that it's worth the loss. Or potential loss, if that's all it is. Anyway, you get the idea. If it doesn't happen repeatedly, and it doesn't happen all of the time, maybe you take the chance. Let's move on to Q. Magic drain from the most powerful magic item other than the artifact or relic within 20 feet of a user who wants who wants to keep this guy around when suddenly my plus three vorpal sword or whatever i happen to have suddenly is not magical anymore do i really want to travel with a guy who's using an item that could drain my magic items of any power whatsoever can we convince him to leave that aside or for us to go bury it without using it anymore reverse alignment permanently is the next one that's nasty sacrifice a certain animal to activate item for one day oh so every morning you have to uh step on an ant what is the uh requirement here do we have to kill puppies are we uh sacrificing a goat or a lamb or a calf, or a bull. How powerful is the item? What sort of uh, what sort of power is it? Is there a way of linking the type of animal to the power that the item gives? Worth uh, considering tying things together. If it's an item that uh, bestows a certain amount of strength, maybe a bull is a good. Uh, a um, thematic sacrifice. Next one, this one gets tricky. Sacrifice a human or a player character to activate item for a day. Now I have to wonder <clears throat> if there's an instruction manual sitting alongside this thing and exactly how a player character, how a player through his player character convinces the rest of the group that this is something we can do. I've never run groups that include evil characters. I don't find that enjoyable. I don't like the competition. I'm the DM. 
evil is my purview and uh, so I tend to tell people no evil characters if you do evil things during the course of a session your player character retires at the end of the session and becomes an NPC and oh by the way an NPC that's traveled with your party and has quite a few insights into where you're going what you're doing and the sort of things that uh, make it very easy for an evil NPC to become very nasty for the group so don't do it anyway that makes this a kind of a non-starter as an artifact or relic in a campaign that I would run. But it doesn't mean that it can't be an artifact or relic that is wielded by uh, an evil villain, uh, NPC, that the player characters are having to deal with. And maybe once they find out that this item exists, let's say they beat this big bad evil guy or girl and they get the item and they examine it and they uh, identify how it works and they find out it requires a human sacrifice uh, they can't just leave this laying around because somebody some point someday maybe not today maybe not tomorrow is gonna pick up this item they're gonna figure out how it works and they're gonna commence to killing sacrificing humans or player characters <laughs> to activate the item and uh, that's kind of meta by the way saying player character so I'm not sure I would go with that either but you could hone it down it doesn't have to be a human per se um, you could make it more specific magic users it requires the death of a magic user to power the item that would in some ways make sense or a high level cleric requires a cleric to power it maybe uh, the prestige or a level I know that's a little meta but within the game world you certainly do have levels of magic they use better and better magic as they grow and gain experience so maybe a minor sort of acolyte cleric only powers the minor powers of the relic or artifact maybe it requires a uh, high priest be uh, sacrificed to it to unlock its greatest powers and it's a problem this is out in the world and uh, so the adventurers would definitely need to deal with it in some way sacrifice 10 to 60,000 gold pieces worth of gems and or jewelry to activate an item activate the item for one day pretty straightforward there V user becomes berserk and attacks everyone within 20 feet randomly check each round for 5 to 20 rounds W user goes insane for one to four days that can mean a lot of things and uh, definitely it's not meant to be good user grows one quarter foot taller it's three inches each time primary power is used that's not bad user shrinks is down at double D there well there you go user instantly killed but maybe raised or resurrected user loses one level of experience a little meta but again as we just talked about with magic users it's something that is visibly manifest within the world user loses one level of experience so that can mean a lot of things depending on the character type but definitely hit points uh, possibly spells those sort of things user receives 2 to 20 hit points of damage user receives 5 to 30 hit points of damage user required to slay a certain type of creature to activate item and slaying another set type will deactivate the item so that assumes that there is some power that is continuous that you would want to turn off at some point so think about that when deciding whether or not that is the malevolent thing for this particular the malevolent effect for this particular item user shrinks one quarter foot each time primary power is used that's d d e e is user transformed into a very 
powerful but minor being from another plane, demon, devil, godling, by creator of item and is carried off to serve his new master. Start a new character. Meta, 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 but sure, why not? FF user withers and ages three to thirty years each time primary power is used, eventually turning the possessor into a deathless withered zombie guardian of the item. Nasty. I guess you start a new character after that as well, unless you want a very narrow focus campaign. GG utterance of a spell causes complete loss of voice for one day hh yearning to be worshipped is uncontrollable those failing to bow and scrape to the artifacts possessor will be subject to instant attack well that's pretty nasty i can see that happening in a group where the attacks just begin immediately no i'm not gonna bam okay Notes regarding malevolent effects. Malevolent powers operate whenever a major or primary power of the artifact or relic is used unless operation occurs after a predetermined but low number of uneventful usages of a major or primary power as stated above on the item description or table. Effects can be successive and cumulative. Body rot effects. Extremities, toes, fingers, ears, nose, lips, eyelids, hands, feet, arms, legs, head in that order. One member per operation. Nothing can prevent the loss or restore the member. So we're not even going to allow a wish to do that. <clears throat> Somebody wants to give up a wish to get a finger back. I may let that happen in a campaign I run just because a wish is meant to be a very powerful thing and artifacts and relics, I think of them as on the same level. The Gesh or Quest Fulfillment enables the possessor to act freely until primary power use once again operates this power. So you can ignore it, but boom, you try to use this item again and you haven't furthered your fulfillment of the quest, then bad things going to happen. Life force freeing an associated entrapment of the possessor's soul will likewise free the life force of a player character and restore his or her body if, when, another character so uses the item. Hmm, that's interesting. I think we'd have to do that a number of ways. I think you... I think as I described earlier, you wind up in the new person's body, and then they're in the thing. Somebody else uses it. Somebody else uses it, and they're inside it, and then that person. So you keep bouncing. It becomes a chain. I don't think you go back into your original body. That would be a little too easy, and I think less fun. Where creature types are called for, select powerful type which would be logically connected to the item, usually foes of its creator or alignment or purpose. Aging three to three years is done by race, life expectancy. Ah, three years for half-orcs, four years for humans, seven years for halflings. So it kind of uh, makes it significant no matter what species you are. Sid says the aging cannot be reversed. We'll come back next time, I think, and... Uh, do the Table 5 primary powers, and that'll be a fun thing to do for sure. So, I just want to thank everybody uh, for checking out the show. If you did, thanks for joining us on the stream, if you did that too. And thank you too, if you wind up uh, checking us out on YouTube. The show streams live on Twitch each Monday at 10 a.m. or just thereafter, as it did today, and then is archived on YouTube. If you are checking out the show on Twitch, please do subscribe to the channel and then also chime in the chat so we know you're there. There's Sarah. Thank you. And 
if you're checking it out on YouTube, by all means, subscribe there. And do please give us a thumbs up on any videos that you like and enjoy. And also uh, click the little bell thingy so that you are updated anytime we upload a new show, which is every week. Um, although we are coming up on December, a few weeks into December, we will be taking a break, our winter hiatus on into January. I'm just looking at the calendar real quick now, and I'm going to say we will not do a show. Last show will be on the 13th of December. Then we're going to take a break for the 20th, the 27th, the 3rd of January, and I think we do four weeks, so we'll take off the 10th of January as well. We'll be back on the 17th of January after last show on 13th of December. So we've got three more shows before the winter hiatus. If you're keeping track, helps me to say it out loud. Anyway, once again, thank you to everybody. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Bye-bye. Uh,